All right, double checking my hair. This is the second time I'm doing this because the first time I had a giant piece of hair just sticking straight out of my head and it was really bugging me. <laughs> All right, hi guys. So who's ready to go back to school or who's not going back to school but loves a back to school season because that's when all the best stationery comes out. Today I have five DIY school supplies for you and you guys seem to be obsessed with the craft projects I come up with for when you're bored, aka the ones that are easy to do but take a little while to finish. So if you're just finishing up summer break, this is a great way to fill those last couple days while also getting prepared for the school year. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button for new DIY videos every Sunday. And if you like what you see, make sure that you give this video a like. It really helps me out if you do. All right, let's get started. First up, we're going to be turning a cheap notebook into this rainbow masterpiece of gorgeousness. Okay, maybe that's a lot to say about your own craft project, but I love how it came out. Grab some magazines, and I'd recommend home decor or lifestyle magazines, anything that has a lot of bright colors. You'll also want to cut out a triangle from a piece of cardstock to use as a pattern. So open up your magazine and look for any large swatches of bright colors or textures. Use a craft knife to cut roughly around the triangle. Keep doing that until you have a large pile of different colors. Now is the fun part, arranging your colors into rainbow order. As you go and you decide which ones you actually want to use, use a pencil to trace your triangle pattern and cut it out. Once you have all of your triangles cut out, arrange your final design for your notebook cover. Then use a glue stick to glue down each triangle. Really be generous with your glue and make sure you're covering the entire thing so you don't have any corners peeling up. Is it just me? I just think it is so satisfying to watch the pile of triangles get transformed into this beautiful rainbow gradient. Once you've glued down all the triangles, carefully trim any that are hanging over the edge. And then, if you want it to be really durable, you can always cover it with packing tape, clear contact paper, or decoupage glue. I think this turned out so cute, and it would be such a fun afternoon project to do with your friends or your siblings before you head back to school. Next, we're going to cover a textbook in what else but emojis. I think this is adorable and you can use the same emojis I did or pick your favorites. I started by printing out several pages of emojis and you can download these pages down below. I'll also link to the site where I found high quality images of all the emojis in case you wanted to use any different ones. After that, it's just a matter of cutting them out one by one, leaving a white outline around each one. This is a great time to put on a podcast because it's gonna take a while. Once you have all of your emojis cut out, grab your textbook, and I already covered mine in plain white paper. Use your glue stick to glue down each emoji, and you'll want to start with your least favorites since they'll end up the most covered up. Keep on gluing them down until you've covered the entire book. then trim down any bits that are hanging over the edges. And then, since you'll probably be pulling this book in and out of your backpack all year long, make it really durable by covering it with clear packing tape. I think this is so cute, and I'm sure everyone in your class who just covered their books with boring paper bags is going to be so jealous because you're gonna have the coolest textbook around. Next, if you have a few leftover emojis from that project, you can turn them into keychains. Begin by cutting down one of the emojis the same way we just did. But for the second one, leave a little extra space all the way around it. Then grab a piece of cardboard like a cereal box and glue your first emoji down onto it. Carefully cut it out. 
Then glue your second emoji onto the other side and cut off the extra paper. It might not be exactly centered, but just do your best to keep them lined up. Now cut a piece of clear packing tape and tape it onto the front of the keychain. Then cut notches into the tape so you'll be able to fold it over, overlapping the notches as you go. Once the entire edge is covered, put a second piece of tape over the back of the keychain and trim off the excess. Now the entire thing should be covered in tape. To turn it into a keychain, poke a thumbtack through the top, and then use jewelry pliers to add a jump ring. Add more jump rings and a keychain, and you're done! You can do this with any emojis, but if you've chosen one with a more unique shape than a circle, you'll just want to print out the same emoji twice, but have one be mirror imaged. Then follow all the same steps to make a second keychain. I'm not gonna lie, these aren't the most durable keychains in the world, but since they're made out of cardboard and paper, they're really cheap to make, so you can switch out your favorite emoji every week if it starts looking a little grungy. Next, I have a really easy craft hack for how to make a pencil case. This isn't a totally original idea, I've seen lots of other people do it, so you can head over to Pinterest if you want even more design ideas for this project. But basically, take a quart-sized slider top Ziploc bag and trim it down to the size you want. Then cover one side with strips of duct tape. Flip it over and fold the extra tape around the edges. and then cover the back with more tape. Keeping on our emoji theme, I decided to make mine look like the heart envelope emoji. To do this, cut a piece of silver tape and cut it down into four thin strips. Add the two bottom strips first, making sure that they meet at the center. And then add the two top strips to make it look like an envelope. Then carefully trim the extra tape on the edges and in the center until it looks like this. To make the heart, lay down three pieces of pink tape and use a marker to draw half of a heart. Carefully cut that out and remove the extra tape. Then fold over the heart and carefully cut the other side to get a perfectly symmetrical shape. Pick it up from your cutting mat and place it right in the center of the envelope. And to finish it off, you can attach one of the emoji keychains we just made. Just cut a piece of string and poke both ends through the jump ring. Pull the ends through the loop so the string is attached to the jump ring. Then very carefully poke each end of the string through the zip top closure on the bag and then poke them down the other side. Tie them in a double knot and cut off the extra string, and this is what it should look like. I think it is so cute, and I love that this entire pencil case is made from supplies you probably already have around your house. And finally, this last one is more of a project for when you're bored in class rather than when you're bored over the summer, but we're going to make doodle-ready lined paper for your binder. All you have to do is print out these patterns that I designed, which I'll link down below, or design your own. Load up your printer with your lined paper, and one by one, print out these designs on the edge of the paper. It's such a simple idea, but now you've got lined paper ready to doodle onto in between taking notes. And I've actually found that doing something mindless like coloring in triangles can actually help you concentrate better, especially if it's a subject that you're not very interested in in the first place. So I hope you guys liked those projects and that you're ready to go back to school. If you make any of these projects for yourself, make sure that you tag hashtag Karen Cavett so that I can see. And make sure that you're subscribed to my mailing list. It's totally free and I send out a newsletter every Sunday recapping everything that I've done that week. So if you wanna make sure that you don't miss any of my projects or anything I'm putting out, 
that's the place to be. And if you're still watching, leave me a comment right down below telling me what is your favorite subject in school, whether you're still in school or even if you've graduated, what was your favorite subject? Mine were probably math and art class. I was so bad at things like history or Spanish, but math just made sense to me and I mean, obviously, I do art. So tell me your favorite class right down below and make sure that you come back every Sunday all month long because I'm gonna have a new back to school DIY video every week. All right, that is it for today. I hope you all have a wonderful school year. I'll see you guys next time.